Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my Borgmuller Opus 100 little series. In this video, we're going to learn how to play number two arabesque. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notifications bell to never miss a new video. Also, I now offer online piano lessons. If you're looking for one, there's going to be information in the description below. Brugman Lehrer's Opus 100 is my ultimate favorite um, technique and piano tuition book. It's suitable from kind of grade one all the way to grade five, possibly grade six, but I would say grade five. The pieces are progressive. There are 25 pieces in the book. They are character pieces, but they include a lot of technical challenges, musical challenges, stylistical challenges. So if you go through all of them or at least half of them, your piano technique is going to benefit from it immensely. So we're going to deal with number two today. First, I'm going to demonstrate it and then I'm going to talk about the difficulties and how to approach the piece. Now, as you could hear, the piece is very runny, very quick, full of little five finger patterns. And it, it also has a very staccato left hand and lots of very uh, intricate articulation. And ultimately, that's the most difficult thing about this piece, getting the articulation crystal clear and even all the way through. Arabesque is in A minor. We have no key signature, so no sharps and no flats. And it is in two four, so two beats in every bar. My book says Allegro Scherzando, which is fast and playful. I have a metronome mark here, which says 152. Now, obviously this book was written for beginners, so a much slower speed is perfectly acceptable. Always practice these pieces slowly because quality is always before speed. And if you can play it really well at a slower or medium speed, then you can challenge yourself to go faster and faster ultimately, but never go faster than your hands allow you to because you're just gonna make mistakes. It's gonna sound uneven and the articulation is gonna go flat. So as we can see, the piece has three sections. The first section is where the right hand has the melody. And then the second section after the repeat sign is when the left hand takes on this little roll. And then in the third section, the main melody comes back from the right hand from the beginning and the left hand takes the chords again. So it's like A, B, A plus, because the, the ending is a little bit different. Let's have a look at the first section. So the most difficult thing in this piece is to get these rolls of the right hand and obviously in the left hand in the second section. Now here we have a group of four semiquavers or 16th notes finishing on a staccato quaver note or eighth note. There is a slur connecting all of these notes. So you have to really play it smoothly connected and bounce at the top. Now, if we start number one on the A, the first roll goes A, B, C, B, A. Now, what I want to do with this is I want to drop on the A and bounce. Drop, bounce, drop, bounce. Now, once I got that articulation in, then I can have a look at the hand. Now, many things that can go wrong in this first section with the semiquavers are that they go very uneven, they blur. This is what I hear the most often. Or anything like that. So whenever it's not crystal clear and even something is going wrong, tension is getting in the way. So what you want to do is really curve your fingers, have a very rounded shape, relax the wrist, and really play from the fingers, try to separate those fingers, almost like staccato. A little finger staccato really helps with the practice, because if your fingers kind of stick together, then it's gonna sound very sticky, because the fingers don't come up in time, and you can't have that clean attack of the note, so. And playing with the fingertips. 
Now, another thing that is very important when you do these rounds is that the hand cannot be static like this. Because then again, you're going to get tension and it's not going to be so even. So your hand has to follow the melody. See, my hand was slowly moving with the melody all the way up. So make sure that the hand and the wrist is moving together with the fingers and shaping that beautiful melody up and down, up, up. And then we have all these position changes. So we start in the A minor position. And then we move up to a D minor position. And A minor. And that's basically the trickiest part of the entire piece. After that, in the second phrase, we have this little staccato offbeat uh, melody. One and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. And we have two endings. I only played the second ending in the demonstration. I didn't want it to play for too long. So both times when we have the repeat sign, we have a first ending. So the first time you play it, you finish on the E. And the second time you ignore the first ending and play the second ending instead where you see number two. And the same applies to the end of the piece. Now here again, we've got some interesting articulation. We start on staccato, then connect, bounce, accent, bounce. So the accented note means you have to play it a little bit stronger, but not staccato. And there is a tie on it. So it's one and a half. It's almost like a dotted crotchet. Now let's see the left hand chords of the first section. We've got an A minor chord. One, three, five. Then in the fifth bar, it's followed by a D minor chord. One, two, five. Back to A minor. Now switching between these two chords many times after each other to get the hand to memorize that switch is going to be really beneficial when you go faster. So one, three, five, one, two, five. Now be careful to release all the notes so it doesn't sound like this. So that the little finger sticks down. And then you can add your staccato. It's very gentle. It's like a bouncy uh, forearm staccato. Now here, it's crucial that the three notes go down perfectly together. So if you hear something like this, then make sure you correct yourself. You concentrate the three notes going down perfectly together with a relaxed wrist. very even pulsating. Your left hand is counting in this piece. Now, after the A minor chord at the end of the first line, we go to a C major chord, a G, C, E, a G7 chord, G, B, F, and C. Now, when the two come together, the right hand has to join in the left hand on the first and finishing on the second beat. So, Which is very good because the staccatos and lifts happen at the same time in both hands. Now when you go on there is that little syncopation left hand starts one and two and one and two and one and two and one. Now as you could see when I had the tie left hand came up and right hand was holding. Then when we go on to the second section, the middle part, the right hand takes on uh, a little single note melody and the left hand takes on the runs. Now let's see the right hand melody first, starting five on the E and it's a dotted crotchet, dotted quarter note. So one and two and 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 two on the G sharp E. And here it says diminuendo e poco rallentando, so slowing down and getting quieter. 
Now left hand is gonna be, if you are right-handed, the left hand is gonna be, or I think for everybody, I can't speak for left-handed people because I'm right-handed, but the left hand is always trickier when you have to do these quick motions unless you've done an awful lot of scales in your left hand. So starting number three on the G sharp, again, curving the fingers. Very careful so it doesn't sound like. But cleanly. making sure that the left hand follows the melody as well so it doesn't stay static and having those staccatos at the end of the phrases just like in the right hand and finishing off with a little quaver motion. Slowing down and back to the E minor chord. And here we have a little bit different, it's an A suspension 4 chord, A, D, E, 1, and two and one and two and one and two and one and then if you go to the second ending it's gonna go jumping down to an A minor position both hands and A minor so that's mostly about the notes and the articulation. Now let's see the expression. The very beginning says leggero, which means lightly. So just what I was telling you about, don't push in too much into those rolls of semiquavers. They still need to be light and fluffy. But as you can see, we have a crescendo starting quiet. So as we go up on that scale, we get louder and louder. And then we have a sforzato on the E, and then back to quiet. Now the middle section starts loud all the way through, it says forte, and we're gonna quiet down and slow down before we return to the third section where it says a tempo, so back to the original speed, and quiet again. Getting louder, and back to quiet and sweetly dolce. Tenuto. And then we have the accent mark again, so make sure you, you press into that E a little bit more. And in the final ending, we have a crescendo again and finishing on a risoluto, which means very firmly. And then sforzato on the final chord, so really loud your whole body weight can go into that chord. and it has a fermata, so holding it long. Now, as you can see, the arabesque is a very short piece that sounds very simple when you listen to it, but it's packed with so many challenges, not just with articulation, but dynamics, hand position changes, and all kinds of other difficulties. So mastering this piece is not easy at all, even though it's the second one in the book. And the faster you play it, the harder it's going to be. So always start slower. If you manage to master it slower, then you can challenge yourself with the speed.